Today, I'm in a small suburb of Kansas City, Missouri, known as Knobtown. Stories of outlaws, suicide, and death surround the area. And in the middle of it all is an abandoned stone house. It's no wonder some think it's haunted. Knobtown possibly got its name sometime around 1897. A man by the name of Charlie Engler built a general store in the area. About a year later, Charlie decided to give the town its name. So he had signs made with the name of Englerville. But just a couple of days later, Charlie was found at the base of the stairs in his storefront with his suspenders wrapped around his neck, hung from a doorknob. His death was determined a suicide, and the doorknob inspired others to call the town Knobtown. Owners of this land where I'm standing have been traced back to the mid-1800s, mostly used as farmland. This particular parcel has been traced to a man by the name of Josiah Davenport. It's believed he's the one who built this stone house. Davenport also bought a small portion of the northwest corner of farmland from Jordan Lowe. This kind of dries up during the summer months, but. Okay. Oh, wow, okay. It's about a one acre pond or so. Okay. Maybe an acre and a half. According to written accounts, William Quantrell and his raiders hid out during the Civil War on the Lowe farm, possibly right here. Several famous outlaws were included in Quantrell's gang. Some of the names are Bloody Bill Anderson and some distant relatives of mine, Frank and Jesse James, and the Younger Brothers. In late March and early April of 1862, Quantrell's raiders engaged federal troops at the David Tate, Sam Clark, and Jordan Low Farms. The Tate House fight became one of the most famous episodes to occur in this area. The road just outside this property used to be a wagon trail. It's now a busy highway. In the late 1890s, the Chicago, Rock Island, and Pacific Railroad was constructed through here. It's possible that the stone house on this property was used by uh, railroad workers for a time, but I haven't been able to confirm that. So George Road's right there. And it runs all the way back to 350. Okay. And this is George Road yeah, right George here? George Road goes all the way up that way to Nolan. And then right there on the other side is the Little Blue River. Okay. And so the creek the creek runs along there and it crosses George Road and it goes right into the Little Blue. Okay. More recently, according to a post I read online, late one night there were some kids from a nearby neighborhood that were playing on the tracks and failed to beat the train across Nolan Overpass. This house is pretty close to where the tragedy occurred. That could be why the abandoned house was true to be haunted by local teens in the area. According to my research, the house was built around 1890, so it's about 130 years old now. It's believed to have been built out of limestone. It's long been a belief among paranormal investigators that limestone, quartz, and or magnetic deposits can capture and store information such as historical events and make an imprint on a location. This could make for an interesting investigation. Viewing the footage from the first floor, I heard a female whisper when I asked, is Sarah here? It sounds to me like it says, yes, I am. So there was a man that lived here named Josiah Davenport. Is Josiah Davenport anywhere around here or his wife, Sarah? 
We heard also that in the Civil War days that William Quantrell and his gang came through here. Is William Quantrell or any of his gang here? This is where it goes upstairs. How safe is that? Uh, <laughs> Not very safe? No. <laughs> okay. Maybe I'll just get a view here. On the second floor, I caught a female whispering, and I think what it says is, turn the something on. I couldn't quite get the one word, but I think it's radio. Turn the radio on. What'd you get? Coin. There. Coin? Do you, can you see the date on it? No, not yet, but we'll wash it up and check it out. It okay. looks it looks old. It might be a penny, but Okay. Yeah, it looks like a penny. Okay. Check it out. On one of the basement walls, we got a picture of what appears to be a ghostly face on there. The next day when we went back, I looked at the same wall and there is some, uh, there's some like whitish something on the wall right there. I don't know what it is, maybe a chemical in the limestone. Um, on the other side of the same picture, there's a, on the right side, there's a green orb. And I did everything I could to figure out where that came from and wasn't able to. So at this time I'm calling it an orb. Like that. Wow. That was was that like in your ear or something? No, I just heard it. In the basement we used the SLS camera and we had the most luck when I asked if Josiah Davenport or Sarah were there. We got some pretty clear figures on the camera. down here can you tell us your name are you William Quantrell 
Are you part of the Quantrell gang? We heard Frank and Jesse James were here too. Are you Sarah? Sarah used to live here. During the investigation, I did not find anything to be harmful here. It does seem like Sarah's still here and she does like to interact with people. Investigating this old house was an awesome experience. The builder of this house is long gone. And as you can see, time has already started to reclaim the ruins of this old house. It's said that time waits for no one. But time stays long enough for anyone who will use it. <laughs>